Okay, there's. Okay, so everybody knows I'm Charlotte Van Horn, the Black Expats in Panama, and you know something? Um, when we have these beat cultural relocation tours, I don't know which tours you're from, and I'm going to ask you in a minute, but we just completed our 21st tour, and we're starting our 22nd tour on August 1st. So I'm just curious, um, for those people that have their cameras on, I don't know if I can see everybody, but how many people are here from the very first tour? Who's here from the very first tour? Who's here from beat two? Who's, who's here from uh, beat three? I can't see y'all what y'all doing. Marlene. <laughs> Marlene, maybe? Your 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 beat three? I think so. Okay. How about beat four? I guess y'all have to unmute. How about beat five? Well, where y'all come from? <laughs> How about so, beat six? What date was it? I, I don't oh, I just know girl. what date I, I was on. I don't know. Which one it was. Okay, Ayana's here from Beep 8. Okay, so Beep, Beep 8. I know we got some Beep 9 in the house. And Leo from nine. Yeah, Beep 9. Here's Daryl and Carl. Cleo. Cleo, hi, Cleo. Cleo's Beep 9. Who's Beep 10? We got Beep 12. We got Beep 13. <laughs> Beep 12. Beep 12. Who's who's twelve? Delana. Delana. Yep. Yay. Renee, B twelve. Y'all need to be repping. B thirteen. Everybody, when people call me, they say, "No, girl, I was in B nine. I was in B ten. I'm like, okay. <laughs> fourteen. Fourteen's in the house. Fourteen. 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 Rep for second. We got yes. 60. Oh, beep 100. Look, look, is that beep 100? <laughs> I, I do, I do declare it. Yes, that we will still be beeping at 100. Um, well, thank you. Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. And I decided to do this, you know, for some of you that were in um like the earlier tours, you know, a lot has changed since, you know, you probably came from the, the earlier tours and everything has changed for the better because we have learned from each and every one of you. Um, we always appreciate your feedback. We always like to um, hope that you were able to get the information and the resources that you needed from the tour. Um, in addition to having a fun and, and memorable experiences. So, um, eventually, I said, you know, we're going to need to like we set up the, the Zoom calls. Uh, we set up our Zoom calls, um, two Zoom calls, you know, before you come. And then I said, you know what? I'm going to start setting up a 30-day action call. So sometimes, you know, people get home and you have questions that, you know, may not have been um, answered or um, just more things that come up after you um, after you get home. And so what we wanted to do was to be able to address those without you having to reach out or figure out who you need to reach out to, which you know you can always reach out to me because once you are on a beat cultural relocation tour, you know y'all family, right? <laughs> so, okay, right. that's right. it. You know, you that's don't right. have to ever, ever, you know, hesitate to reach out to me. Um, I do have a, um, a few of the professionals online, um, and I wanted to have them on in case we had any questions that they would need to ask, um, that you might need to ask them and also hoping that they could share maybe some things that people ask them through the fact. 
So first I want to start out with finding out who in this group has actually moved to Panama. Who's here? Who's iPad to? Nobody, nobody on this call has moved yet. I'm here, Charlotte, but I was, but I was, I moved from before I met you, so that doesn't really count. Oh, you get. Listen, let me tell you something, Miss Cleo. You give me all the credit. Do you understand? Okay, I don't care what somebody asks you. You say, "Oh yes, I went on the beat relocation tour." I don't care if you had a house before. You got another, okay? So you just make sure you you give me all the credit. <laughs> okay, I will. But I like the fact that, you know, it, it goes to show that you got something out of the tour as well, right? And you had already, she had already moved here. She was going back and forth and um, she had already moved here, but she came on the tour and then she actually got another place. And we've just been family ever since. Um, so... Okay, so what I want to do now is to start out with uh, um, the questions. Before I am, and then I'm gonna take a break and introduce um, the. What should I do, y'all? Should I should I see what questions the professionals get first and see if you cover that? See if they cover. Let's start with them and see what questions they most commonly get after the fact. And it may just cover some questions that you already have. Then we'll go from there. So let, is Michael on the call? Not Mike Kelly, um, Michael. Michael, uh, Matthew. I know you have to leave early. Yes, so I wanted to- I'm here. Oh, how are you doing? Very good. Good. Um, go ahead and introduce yourself, Mike. And um, if you have any, you know, just take a couple of minutes and tell us if you have any questions that come to you after the fact or questions that don't get asked during our uh, open night recep uh, um, reception dinner. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Michael Matthew. I'm the insurance professional. And well, uh, I can tell you about the questions that I got from uh, customers from uh, the last uh, tour that they, when they wanted like uh, insurance for their home uh, here in Panama, uh, we can fill out some uh, with a lot of companies. We can fill out all the paperwork digitally. So you, they were concerned about uh, getting the papers uh, signed uh, and with some companies, it's not necessary. So uh, the important thing is that I put all the information that you give me. And, and when you make, a, a, to buy a policy, I will make you, I will send you the receipts and all that. That was the questions that I have from uh, previous customers. Uh, besides that, I have some issues with uh, uh, health insurance, and pre-existing conditions. Mm -hmm. Like I always mention in, in tours, when I present myself that uh, we need to take a look of the pre-existing pre conditions in order to get uh, health insurance. Sometimes, depending on the conditions, uh, the companies will approve it. But on the other hand, if you have a several pre-existing conditions, the company we also uh, decline the, the process. So uh, those are the some questions that I, that I have. If you have any questions right now to okay. for me, I would be willing to answer you. Thank you so much. I just want to go ahead and um, have you some uh, somebody ask, do you work uh, with medical insurance or just home insurance? Okay. But you do. I work all insurance. type of insurance. Yes, he does all types. Medical, life insurance, car insurance, house insurance, all type of insurance. Okay. Excelente. Gracias. Um, You're welcome. Okay. Um, how many of you? Oh, somebody's asking how many of you have rented and, and how long. Okay, so we'll get we'll get to those too. Um, so let's go to uh Mike Mike Kelly. Hey, Charlotte. Hey. 
How How's it going? Like? It's go going, going very well. I'm just so happy to see all my family here. <laughs> so, Mike, it's great tell, to be here. Tell us what you do. I know. I mean, I guess because um, you you were probably at the uh, reception night for most people that were here, but just tell us what you do and what questions you typically get afterwards or the most popular questions. Yeah, yeah, I've definitely seen a lot of familiar faces out there. I've probably met most of you. Uh, so it's good to see everybody. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I get all kinds of health related questions. Um, you know, just thinking of some of the more frequent questions, one would be medication. You know, uh, a lot of people are concerned and want to know uh, if they can get their medication here in Panama. Uh, you know, and that's a big one because you might be, you know, have a prescription and uh, you, wherever you go, you, you would need to have access to those medications. So a lot of what I do in those cases are, first of all, I check on the availability of, of your medication here in Panama. Um, and there are some, you know, more uh, not, not so common medications that we might not even be able to get here. But most everything we can find, if not the exact brand, at least the substitute, you know, the closest to what you need. Um, make sure it's available, check on the price, and uh, we can, you know, that that goes on to when you're living here, we can actually arrange to have medications uh, delivered to you, and, and um, so that that's never an issue of not being able to get your medication. So that's one of the, the main questions that I get. Um, you know, how do you get set up with your, your GP or general physician? And what we do is we can, you know, set up a call for you, um, you know, ahead of time, and then, you know, we do, you know, we actually do expat health. Sorry, for, uh, sorry I'm going to back up a little bit. So just my, to remind you the name of my company, which is expat health services. And one of the services that we provide is um, a health tour. So we, you come down and we'll present, you know, introduce you to doctors. Dr. Duncan is our general physician. You might, most of you have already met Dr. Duncan. Uh, so he is our general physician and he kind of, you know, takes charge of your medical file and uh, make sure that your everything's set for you. And if you need any specialists, that's another big one. You know, a lot of people ask me, well, you know, who, who are the best specialists? Do they speak English? Um, how do we get set up with them? So, you know, we kind of take, we do all the legwork for all of that. So whether or not you do a, a tour before you come, a health tour, you know, once you're here, what we can do is just set up your appointment with your specialists and your doctors um, get all the legwork taken care of so that it's, you know, it, the idea is that it's just as easy as possible when you're here. Um, cause it, that all that can get kind of complicated. Uh, but the, you know, those are the main things, um, you know, and just, you know, we, we try to just provide like a concierge style service. So we're just trying to make life easier and get you set up with doctors that speak English. That's another big one. Do our doctors speak English? Well, the ones that we work with definitely do. Okay. Um, and thank so, you know, you, yeah. Thank you, Mike. Um, we're going to, there, there's some questions for you in the chat. If you could take a look there and also, yeah. um, also for the, um, professionals that are here, make sure that you put your name and your contact information in the chat. Okay. And so next, and we just going to go real then quickly to, we have, um, Maria. Let's go to Maria. And also I can, uh, we can save this chat. I don't know if Michael, I know Michael had to leave by 6.30. Are you still here, Michael? Yeah. Answer whatever questions you can before you go. Maria, okay. uh, please introduce yourself. Good evening. Hello everyone. How are you? Hi. <laughs> Hi, nice to see you again. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I wanted to talk about the most frequent questions that I have is about rental options. Um, so, well, almost every day I have questions about rentals, but I wanted to explain about the rentals here in Panama because I think uh, it's very important because it's different from U.S. And the me and the sense of that we don't have uh, is locations or 
or clusters or um, complexes like in US, especially for rent. Uh, so you go in, into a regular building that has uh, tenants and also owners. Uh, and th for that reason, we cannot do tours to a regular building to show only options for you maybe come back and later, two or three months or one month later. So it doesn't work that way. So the way it works is if you decided to rent in Panama, you have to come over at least five days before you're gonna make the decision. And you can, or for example, I can go and show you the properties or the options, three or five options. And then you have to make the decision because that's what the owners expect for the rentals. It's not like, uh, I know because I used to live in US and I used to live in a complex too. And so the, the complex has, um, how do you say, um, management company, they manage uh, and the, they have this person to show you all the options they have in that particular uh, complex. Uh, but over here is different. So um, that's one, one thing that I wanted to point out about the rentals that is different from US. So uh, if, you, if you wanted to come over and make a decision to move is my advice is to come over like five days in advance and be ready to see the options and be ready to rent and bring your um, bank statements, two or three months uh, bank statements, your ID and and your retirement letter. That's that's good. That's um that's very good information. And what we're gonna do is at this point we're just introducing the professionals and allowing them to let you know that they're here. The professionals are asking that you go through the chats and see who's asking you questions and maybe go ahead and respond to them. But we want a chance to get to everybody and we want to make sure that, you know, um, the beat tour guests get a chance to answer, answer questions. So that's why we'll be coming back to the professionals. Put your questions in the chat um, if you don't want to just wait to ask it um, out loud. Um, okay, thank you, Miss Maria. We'll come back to you and... Like I never heard the requirements for rental until now. So that was good. So that's three, but you said three bank statements. Uh -huh, bank three, two or three bank statements, uh, and and the um uh, ID the and uh, re retirement letter. Uh-huh. If yes. it's if is is it retirement letter, if it's if you're pensionado or if yes, the, pensionado. If you have the if you have the uh, yeah, pensionado and if you have the uh the ID, the retirement ID also yes. works on your or your passport. Do you, okay, so you do not have to be a resident in order to rent here, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. You do not, okay, thank you. Thank you, Maria. Okay, mm -hmm. let's introduce Giovanna. Hey, Giovanna. Hi, Charlotte. Hi, everyone, hey. good evening. Very nice to see so many familiar faces and <laughs> I miss you too. Some of them I already uh, met because they did residency and some of them are looking forward to start the process. And I also help with the real estate transactions. I see Ayana here, um, oh, uh, Elsa Monique. Um, <laughs> um, yes, <laughs> so many names. And face it, there is a group from BIP 18 that is um, preparing also like four or five girls that are preparing for for their retirement in Panama. So yes, we, I'm an immigration attorney, but I'm also a CPA and attorney in other matters. Um, we help and support relocation on the fact that we can help opening bank accounts, getting the visas, the pensionados, temporary permits, and also um, accounting, assisting on real estate transactions, asset protection and succession planning. So from, especially to expats and also international companies that want to do business here. And um, I will be very happy to, to hear your, your questions. Um, we also offer complimentary consultation, Zoom calls. So if you're interested, I will put the link with my information and I will be very happy to answer all your questions. 
Thank you. And follow the chat, okay, um, Giovanna, and see if you have any uh, questions on there. It's Julie of oh, Genesis. Hi, Genesis. Hi, good, good afternoon. Hi, please go ahead and introduce yourself and your company and let us know just some, um, you know, common question or two that expats have. Of course. So first of all, good afternoon to everyone. Um, my name is Jenny, Genesis, but you can call me Jenny. I'm here today on behalf of my company, which is Ocean Import and Export Logistics. So we do take care of international moves. That's what we specialize on. So if you have decided to, you know, make that big step and come here and live here and you're planning on bringing your belongings, either small containers or a big container or just loose cargo or your car, things like that, we can definitely help you with that. Um, the most common question that we get, uh, I'll say will be related to cars um, and if it is worth it to bring your car. Um, I'll personally say that it is worth it if you have a special car that let's say it has a ramp for a wheelchair, things like that. So it's something not very common to find here in Panama. If it's a very new car that you know you just bought and things like that, or it's a very expensive car that you might not be able to find here either. And also keep into consideration that the quality standards, quality and safety standards here in Panama are not as strict as in the United States. So most likely what you have in your country has a bit more of a strict, um, has followed a more restrict um, protocol, I'll say. So yeah, if you wanna take that into consideration, you might analyze that and decide if you think it's worth it. Um, another common question that we get is, related to the taxes once you come here with your belongings. So if you have the retirement visa, if you have the pensionado or jubilado visa, and you're coming from the United States, you're a citizen in the United States, you do get the advantage of tax exemption. Mm -hmm. um, you just have to have a few paperwork to fill out with us. We do have an agent that will take care of the process for you. And you just have to provide us with the paperwork. An important thing is that you have to be a, a United States citizen and be living in the United States for more than two years. Those are the main two requirements. Um, what you else? said you said they have to be a United States citizen and be living in the United States for at least two years. That's correct, yes. And then they get a tax exemption? With that paperwork, uh, once you, you give it to us, our custom curious agent will begin with the tax exemption process. That does have a few, pulling quite a few fees, but mm -hmm. once you do the math, it's way better than paying for taxes for your whole cargo, which usually exceeds uh, the $2,000, $3,000 if you don't uh, apply for that. Okay, I think, you know, I'm so glad that you guys are um, working with us because I was looking for another suitable um, moving company. And the reason why you're so important is because this international moving is something that most of us, most people will never do in their life. Most, you know, most people will never leave their country to move to another country. But, you know, unless you're going for work or, you know, just some people do that. But for the most part, most of your clients, would you say that most of your clients are first time international movers? For sure. Yeah, that's especially what I personally specialize on. That's why I'm the one here in the meeting today. Yes. I do specialize on um, international moves. So, yeah, basically we do one on one work one on one with the customer the whole process we explain them this what's going on um along the way in front of them of any changes let's say the chips delays for one or two days we inform all of that when it is arriving where it's when it is leaving the board when it's in transit to your new home all the information is provided so we provide the customer the sense of comfort and because we do understand what we have in hand, we have your belongings. Basically your home is in a container and we're transferring from one country to another. And we know it can be a stressful situation, especially because it, it is basically like a chain that will involve so many steps. 
um, from packing your items to taking them to the port to booking the ocean freight to custom clearance, custom clearance here in Panama, taking everything out of the port to arriving to your home. It is quite a long process and everything is managed by someone different. So that's what we are here basically. To so we have the stressful part. Yeah, so you're, you know, you have then the time and the, the mindset to look for your new home, to be ready for your move, to be excited to move to a new country, to the tropical here, and not be so stressed because of the actual yeah, moment. Yeah, it's a big piece. It is really a big piece. And um, do you guys do like consultations prior to the booking and everything like that. And I'm at, and I'm allowing her to answer so many questions because I know that a lot of you probably did not get to meet a moving company when you came because we did not have one available for you. So I just wanted to, you know, get that information out there. And there's more questions for you too in the chat, um, Genesis. But do you provide a cons consultation prior to? Of course, yes. I will be leaving my contact in the comments, in the chat group mm -hmm. and then we can either do calls through whatsapp regular phone or even zoom calls if you feel more comfortable that way we can answer all the questions and basically also get all the information that we need to begin with your quote and yeah go from there everything can be changed if you want for us to pack your items we can do that if you prefer to do it with a different company it's perfectly fine if you have let's say a pool table that will require special crating we can definitely take care of that too and things like that um so yeah we offer the full service it's just basically up to you what would you like to get from us and from a different company Okay, one question from um, Debbie, and she wants to know, are only Americans tax exempt? She's from Bermuda. No, no. Um, it, uh, it is different for different countries. I will have to verify with our custom okay. clearance. It will be the requirements in this case, depending on where you're coming from okay. and what type of visa you have. It is very important for you to be in the country when your items are coming, since we do need your passport stamp. Uh, of your entrance once your items are here so we can really get them from the board. But all that information is provided along the way with the customer. We know it's a lot of information to, uh, you know, to process. So we provide it along the way. We just make sure um, you know, you, you're aware of the key steps that we need to, you know, maintain to make sure everything goes smoothly, but everything is, else is provided along the way. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I just wanted to say this in this process, guys, um, what's very important is that we just have professionals that could take us from one step to the next, because we have so many other things, like she said, to be concerned about even that packing situation, that packing situation, like the sent me to counseling. OK, I mean, just the packing part to know that you have somebody say, OK, this is what we're going to be doing next. So all of the professionals that you meet here and that we introduce you to, we always want to make sure that they're giving you direct guidance. OK, step by step. We don't want you feeling confused. We don't want you feeling ignored. OK, so we we, appre we definitely appreciate that. Thank you, Miss Genesis. Um yeah. We have a question um, for Pensionado Visa. Um, um, Giovanna, for Pensionado Visa, what are the SSI requirements? And do you have to have pay stubs from SSI or will the letter suffice? Hello. SSI is Social Security, right? The Social mm -hmm. Security Statement. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. When you are retired from Social Security, what we use as a support document is the social security statement. It's a document that shows uh, the amount of your pension and when you start receiving benefits, basically. It's like a two-page document. And if it's more than $1,000, that's enough. No need to add any other pension or document. So I talked to a lady um, earlier today. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. That's an easy mark for most American retirements. And so it could be a pension. It could be, um, now SSI is social security issuance. So is there a social security, what's the disability part? 
So say if somebody is getting disability, does that count? And how yes. does that differ? Yes, it does count. Um, yes, it we has did to that recently. Uh huh. Yes, we did that recently with us uh, Nadine Hawkins. Mm -hmm. I don't know if she's here. Her daughter. She was. Uh, she had the social security from from disability, mm -hmm. and it was more than one thousand. And we used that one as well. It worked. Okay. The most important thing with disability is that um, it has to be a permanent type of disability. Mm -hmm. And it a usually has to be. So, so the, the permanent language is very, um, very, okay. I see Mike's answering some questions. The permanent part is very important. Um, okay. looks like a lot of questions are being answered. Um, uh, Mike, somebody wanted to say, do Mike, somebody asked, do medical providers accept health savings account? Is that mean flexible spending y'all? Uh, Carla's asking that question. Oh, he's still there. Oh, yeah, that, that would be the, the health savings account. Yeah, it's it's not the same as flexible spending. It's 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 different. Okay. Yeah, there there you can set up an account like that, but I I haven't heard that those are accepted here. Um, you can basically what it is. What basically what it is is that you know every every month I I put money away for um you know potential healthcare expenses, and when I need to use it is you use it on a MasterCard. Oh, okay. Yeah. If it's if it's through a MasterCard or a card like that, then you shouldn't have any problems. Okay. Um, yeah, you would just pay on site. You know, I was going to say a lot of times you would pay and then seek reimbursement. Okay. And it, it works uh, like that with a lot of U.S.-based insurance carriers. So if, but if they actually give you a card that has the funds on it, then you should be able to use that in any hospital. Okay, thank you. No problem. Okay. Keith that wanted to know, is there anybody on here who has rented and for how long? Is there anyone here that can answer that question for him that is currently in Panama renting? Okay. It looks like for the most part, unfortunately, the people who have already made the transition are not as as likely to be on the call because they they living it up. They done did their thing. Um, but what I can say, um, you know, Keith, I was just looking at some stats um, this week. And I want to say that so far, the number of people that we have that have moved here from our first tour in um, May 21, I count 26 and a majority of them have moved here and are renting. Um, Maria, do you want to share anything about any of the experiences of the renters that you, you have helped? Maria? Is Maria here? Did Maria go? Okay, Maria. I guess uh -huh. Okay, um I was oh, okay, okay. I was answering some questions. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you, Maria. But I mean, uh, you have Mike um Keith is is asking, I guess he's just wanted some wanting some information about, you know, some uh people who have rented and how long they've rented. Maybe you could just tell us briefly about some of the issues that people have or some of the concerns that people have when they rent from you? Because we have, most people have come and rented units, guys. A majority yes. have rented, some have purchased. So Go the ahead. majority of the renters I have, I have helped, are, they are for long-term, a year. Um, I just have few, I think I can count, I think three of them, six months only. Mm -hmm. but no less than six months. Um, so their issue always is about maybe the, the language, first of all, mm -hmm. when they need some, uh, you know, they, uh, they cannot communicate with owners or, or stuff like that. So they ask me, well, that's one of the, 
as the help that I do for my clients is always, you know, they always open uh, to call me or uh, message me when they need uh, any, you know, help with electricity or any issue uh, um, at, at their place. Uh, but yeah, the rest of the uh, the clients, they, ha they have long term, like a, a year. And some of them renew it. For example, Deborah, uh, Deborah Laundry, she renew uh, the her contract. And and do does it matter like if if um if he was to rent, you know, I know that especially renting in the city, and somebody's asking right now, where are most of the 26 people living who have moved to Panama? And hands down, the, most of the people are living in the city. You know, within the province, the people that have come on this tour and have purchased here, a majority of them are living in the province of Panama City. Right. And I know um, we might have a few that are living in Boquete and Petasai, but yes. for the most part, people like the city, either the city or Coronado. It's either Panama City or Coronado. I say they were deaf, they are definitely the top two, but Panama City is definitely the most popular, I think, amongst the Black expats that we see come through. Uh, yes. Would you because say, Maria? Yes, because of the convenience of, you know, some of them, they're not planning to move and have a car right away. Uh, they wanted to, you know, you know have the uh, transportation, easy transportation, Uber or the train or taxi. And that's one of the reasons. Also, they also want to be close to everything, <clears throat> walking distance. So, and that's what Panama offers uh, to them, you know. And if they move um, to the beach area, uh, I mean, it's a lot of people there too, but they have to plan uh, most most of them to have a car or to manage transportation. Uh, Cleo, is in Cleo is in Casco and she has a beautiful, um, beautiful home out there. Cleo, have you moved in yet? Nope, still waiting for it. Still waiting for, um to do my inspection and then take occupancy of the new well, one. Do you want to share, um, do you want to share some of your experience? So I originally purchased in Casco Viejo in 2015 with the intention of moving to this new development, which has, which is now being completed. So that was just a temporary stop for me. I decided to purchase and and go back and forth in the meantime until my basically dream apartment was ready. So it's been maybe five years now that it's being developed because we got caught um, having to stop through COVID. So right now we're at the point where buildings develop, the apartment pretty much looks finished. We're just waiting for occupancy. Right. So. And, mm -hmm. and Cleo is um Cleo is comes from Canada. And yeah. so we do have like most people that have come on our tour from the US, and then second it's Canada, and then third it's Bahamas. But like one of the things like Cleo, I know in 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 your experience it was so different is because they just are not giving a delivery date. And exactly. Just like whatever. Whereas, you yeah. know. In the in the states, this would be like unacceptable. Yes. Oh, so, and yes. So Cleo has come back and forth to Panama like maybe twice now, thinking yes. that she's going to close and take ownership. I've seen the place; it is absolutely the bomb, but it it hasn't happened, and I think that's a really that's a wake up call. It so, is. Uh, it it is. is a wake up call. Do they have any new projections, Cleo? No. No. <laughs> no, and that's one of the things that's frustrating, like, you know, living in North America and, you know, you have to process, the developer would send you letters with your occupancy date, you know, your tentative date, your final date. It's very different. It, it's a real, it really um, challenges your patience. You have to really be patient, like, 
um, living in Panama and dealing with the Panamanian process. Like, and also you may get trapped in the sense that you assume a lot of things because you just assume that things are going to work the way they work in America, but it's not always the case. So it's been a real learning experience and I've learned okay. to be patient and just take things day by day. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and, and my, my cousin, like I say, um, he told me from the very beginning, he said, forget everything, you know, yes, the United States. He said, this yeah. is Panama. And it I is. feel like it has really helped me to manage my expectations. <laughs> With that said, guys, I also want to say that I have been coming back and forth. I've been coming to Panama since 2004. We have owned a home here since 2012. And I was telling somebody the other day, the one thing that I can say about Panama is it is definitely progressive, you know? And I think that really, honestly, it is kind of one of the things that I am most appreciative of as opposed to living in the United States. I really do not feel that the U.S. is in a progressive you know, season at this moment. And so I'm very glad to be here in a place that I consider... Um, progressive um is there anybody else that had any questions that aren't in the chat oh oh is it somebody oh mike's i'm um, telling you about getting a car there's a question is it easy to get a car um how difficult is mike answered he says it's easy to get a car just to be just be to site just be to site to buy from a reputable, yeah, be sure. Be sure to buy from a reputable dealership. Avoid buying. Sorry from, about that. That's <laughs> all right. Avoid I, buying. I think there was a, a spell check got me on that one. It should have been be sure. <laughs> that's be sure. And 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 I, you know, Mike, I, I agree with you. And when it came to getting a car for us, you know, uh, I was thinking, well, um, we buy, I bought a juke because I saw cars here. And this is something that you might notice. Like if you come here, you might notice what cars are matching the cars back home because you figure, okay, if I have a car from back home, they can fix it here. Right. So I bought a juke because back, you know, when I used to come here years ago, I would see a lot more flooding on the road. So I, the juke was small. I didn't want a big car. I didn't want a Mercedes. I didn't want a BMW here because it's just not the norm. At the end of the day, one of the things that being in Panama, you know, you're melanated, you fit in. Okay. It's like, I think if you get yourself a Range Rover, you know, or if you're in a Beamer or in a Benz, I think that's just one thing to make you stand out. And if you want to just blend in, I think it's just better to go with, you know, uh, a more common car here. They have a lot of Nissans, uh, Mitsubishi, what, Kia, Hyundai is very um, popular, and Toyotas. They're like the most popular, right? So you have them. And so I said, I'm going to buy um, uh, a Juke because it sits high off the ground, it's small, and it's cute, and I saw them working there. But by the time we decided to move, and I bought it early enough to pay it off before we were going to leave, because uh, we can ask Genesis, but I don't think you can take a car that has a car note on it overseas. But what I, what I noticed is that the cars are manufactured differently. So if you have a car that's manufactured for the United States, getting parts... Um, getting parts here in the U.S., I mean, in Panama for that car might be uh, problematic. So just do your little research on that. Genesis, can you bring a car that has a note on it? Nope. I'm sorry, can you repeat that one more time? Like if a car, if, if a person wants to bring their car, do they have to prove that the car is paid off? Yes. Yes. You cannot yes. bring a car from the United States to Panama or probably any other country because there's jurisdiction issues. That yeah, that 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 lien holder is not going to let you take that car out the country. You do have to have the paperwork and the move or the transportation of the car has to be on the name of the owner of the car. So if you're going to bring it here to Panama and it is not on your name yet, uh, you're not able to do so. It has to be on the name of the owner. And that will only happen when it is fully paid. 
Okay. Um, Daryl is asking, are electric or electric or hybrid vehicles sold in Panama? I think so. Oh, yeah. Mike, do Chris, have Chris, are you on here? I think they got hybrids here, right? We do. We, it's it's coming up slowly here, you know, but yes, we do. We have some options now more than a few years ago. Yeah, they're becoming more popular. Okay. Um, this is for Cleo or anyone on the call who plans to rent out their home instead of selling. Question is, is it better to sell your possessions or put your stuff in storage? Cleo, you want to start with that one? What your opinion is? Um, well, you 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 you, you, actually sort of like a, you you maintain residence in both places. Yeah, because I was wondering if the question was regarding my home in Canada. If that's the case, then I'm I'm not selling my home in Canada. I'm I have um like I'm planning to go back and forth between both houses. Yeah, she comes back and <laughs> forth. Is there anybody else? I'll give you what my opinion is on that, but is, does anybody else care to share? Um, this is Michelle. I'm, I'm not moving for one year, but we absolutely plan not to sell our home, but we plan to rent it just because the real estate in the United States is skyrocketing. So we know we could make a profit off of renting our home. We could make a profit selling as well, but if we rent it, we can have that monthly income and a tax break for it with the new tax laws. And um, in reference to the storage piece, we don't plan to store, but I think that's a personal, that's a personal choice. Yes. Um, people do it different ways. Um, I, I see some people, you know, a lot of people, they sell everything. They sell everything. Oh, okay. Hang on a second. Go ahead, Ayana. You have your hand oh, up, sorry. Yes, ma'am. I was just like what Miss, I think Michelle was just saying, same thing. We're renting. Our goal is to rent out the house we are living in right now. And as far as like storage, we, we're gonna get rid of stuff. We're moving into something smaller, we're minimizing. But um, you know, our home will be rented out. So you're gonna keep your house in the States. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it is like a, a personal choice. I'll tell you what, uh, you know, some people, some people get rid of everything. Some people um, hang on to stuff. Um, some people just decide the market is right. I'm going to go ahead and sell. That was me. Uh, I sold my house because I knew that, we, you know, our plans for staying in that house wasn't no more than about two years. Uh, Alfredo was already here permanently. And with all that money on the table, I said, it's time to go. <laughs> so, you know, it made, and one thing about doing that, I'm going to tell you, it made the whole moving experience for me so much sweeter because, I mean, there was just no issue with financing or having enough money for this. We could, we were able to make an adventure out of it. You know, we took a, a auto train to Florida because we, you know, we got a place in Florida and in, in Panama at the same time. So that was very good. I find that people, you know, I think that you just need to be sure. So I think that some people hold on to stuff until they just say, why am I holding on to that? You know, and then some people say, well, what do I really have to hold on? But to tell you the truth, I move too much stuff. And at the end of the day, I had already furnished our house. We had already had our house almost 10 years at the time, nine or 10 years. And we have been coming in and furnishing it little by little. And because you know we moved based on a container, not weight. And, and Genesis can speak to us about that too. Whatever you can fit in that container is word up. And so I said, you know, for as much as it would cost to ship things individually to Panama, I'd rather have too much over here than not have the things that I wanted. And so right now I'm about to downsize again. But I think that it's, it's best to start looking at it right now. What can I live without? What do I need to start letting go? Because when you start that process, 
You may not realize it, but we got a lot of stuff, y'all. And I'm telling you, I had, I literally almost had an emotional breakdown because I look like a minim minimalist. My house looked like a minimalist, <laughs> but my closet looked like a hoarder. <laughs> you know, it was like, oh my God, I still got boxes here, like under the clothes, just out of sight, out of mind, you know? So uh, yes, Lloyd. Go ahead, Lloyd, we can't hear you. Um, yeah, I just also wanted to say another option is if you're not ready, like if you're in the beginning stages, um, something I looked into was um, if you live near a hospital, you can rent out to traveling nurses and you can keep a lot of your stuff and just rent it almost like an Airbnb, but it's just for nurses. So it's not as much wear and tear until you decide whatever decision you want to do. They do usually do like three months at a time. Yeah, I did look into that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So when you're going, so somebody is asking about climate change. Yeah, at this point, guys, I think that the whole world is hot. <laughs> I swear to you. Um, they had a heat advisory I saw the other day in Panama, you know, uh, because it's so hot here. And somebody was saying that for so much of the planet to be hot at one time, that it really is not a positive indicator when it comes to global warming. Um, somebody asked about flooding. Um, flooding. Okay, so flooding, I mean, I don't think that we experience um, too much flooding. I know I don't in the city, but I, I don't know. Maria, you know more about Chiriquí, um, Giovanna, you know, some of the outlying places. Is, it, is flooding an issue? On, um, only when it was uh, the hurricane in Ita, Ita. Ita? So, uh -huh. oh, Emma? It, uh -huh. it, ha it happens in Chiriqui, but it's, you know, it's when something like that is happening in, let's say, in the Caribbean. Yes. And it's a it's lot like of the, the residuals. Yes. Um, but no, it's not no common. You agree, Giovanna? Yes, it's like like Maria said, just for something like really special or a place that is very, very low, or sometimes there are like trash obstructions that will keep floods on the streets, but when it rains over, everything goes back. But it's like when it's very, very, very rainy. Um. And that's when it's a residual from somewhere else because typically we do not have hurricanes here. We do have um um we do have um what's it um, earthquakes. We have earthquakes. Um quite a bit really, but I guess they're they're mild, so a lot of times you don't know it's happening, but they, they do have or have earthquakes. One thing I'll say about Panama is you know, it's been sort of like in a safe zone for hurricanes, and I hope that never changes because there is so much stuff that is so close to the to the 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 coastline that it would be a problem. I mean, people are built. I mean, the the in in Coronado, the beach is so short because the buildings are right there. Um, so I just hope, like I said, that that never changes. Somebody asked a question. They said, any tips for maintaining U.S. address but keeping costs down while doing a snowbird model? Um, what I think you say, you're saying is that you want to you wanna come and go. So you want to leave the U.S. or wherever um, you are when it's cold and come to, to Panama where it's warm but you want to keep a U.S. address. So um, are you, I mean, are you saying what kind of rental situation could you get or could, can you elaborate on your question, Tracy? Is Tracy, is Tracy still here? Okay, I'm I'm really not exactly sure how to answer that question. Does anybody else have an understanding or need more clarity on that? Hey, 
Who's that? <laughs> you okay? Um, does anybody else have any more questions? Um, when you went back home, like who went back home and tried to figure out, like, how do I make that next step? Like, you know, when you went back home and, and you get settled back in, do you just kind of feel like when you go back home, like that was kind of a dream? I'll probably- Charlotte? Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry to interrupt you. This is Tracy. I couldn't get my mute off. So oh, whenever okay, you're ready- Oh, okay, okay, go. <laughs> I apologize. Yeah, no problem. Um, I was asking because I am envisioning, um, you know, I'm still working and so- the time to, you know, living full time in Panama is, you know, probably four or five years out for me. But I, you know, while the boys are in college and whatnot, I'd like to come and, you know, be there, test it out. But then, you know, possibly be coming back to the U.S., um, you know, when they're in home from school and things like that. So I'm just wondering if there's any bright ideas about how to do that without just straight up paying, you know, rent in two places at the same time. I'm just wondered if anybody had any experience with that. Well, I, you know, actually I did a lot of back and forth, um, like probably the year before COVID. And then even after we came back from COVID, cause I was still, I still had my, um, sister locks business in Woodbridge, Virginia, and I had a business here and I had to serve clients. I was coming to Panama, like almost every other week. Um, but you know what I did? I had this big house and I rented it. So I, I rented the rooms. I, I rented, I had three bedrooms upstairs. Wasn't nobody there but me. And I rented those two rooms and I rented um, salon chairs in my shop. So whenever I was gone from the house in the United States, it was still making money. I mean, the that was the best way I could figure out. It was literally, I mean, the, the mortgage was literally almost, almost paid, I think with the, uh, probably paid with the, with the uh, mortgages that we, uh, with the rents that I was taking in. So, you know, if you're open to having like, uh, I would suggest what Lloyd was saying, like if you could find somebody, you know, dependable or have the, the traveling nurses or something, just somebody to kind of take the brunt off of that, that expense while you're, you know, in the States. While you're back and forth, but you still have your place to come. It is the best feeling just to be able to come back and forth and have a place to come, you know, and I, and I will warn that some people, you know, they sell everything. Okay. This, we're going to be talking about this on Saturday at 2 PM central standard time on the, our, our um, series of turning the page and what, I really want you to be mindful of is for those people that are coming here and still have to work or those people who are coming here and have a modest, you know, pension or retirement income, you know, come here and know that that money goes. I mean, there, there's, I mean, the rent or the mortgage, the rent might be a little less than it is where you are, but if you're not feeding, you know, if you're not adding to your income, um, then you can run out of money. What people do, and I see people do this when they sell their house. When they sell their house, they they rich, okay? They sometimes, for the first time in their life, got six figures in the bank, baby. They is balling. Come to Panama, and you see this penthouse, on the beach overlooking the water. I mean, right there, boom, stickity boom. You walk out the building, it's resort style living, and you're in a penthouse for 2000 or 2500 a month on the beach. When you come in from New York or any place where that kind of uh, uh, real estate is, is very expensive, it doesn't seem like a lot. But if all you coming with is that six figures you got from selling your house and you're not adding anything back to it, baby, it is dwindling. I have seen people come here and run out of money. And what happens is they, they, they run out of money and then we go back and forth a lot anyway. So somebody just say, oh, Chad, I got to go because my daughter need help with this. My mama's sick. 
and they go on and they never come back. And it's because they spent mm -hmm. all their money. They didn't pay attention to the, the, um, the restrictions on employment here. There are restrictions on employment too. I believe when you have a pensionado and it get, it put, you can get put in a bad situation. Then you go back home and you ain't got jack. You have no house. You sold everything or you gave it away. You have nothing. So you go back to the States with your tail between your legs, having to start all over again at 50 something, 60 years old. That is no place that I want to be in. Heller. So, I mean, we definitely need to understand. And then, you know, some people figure, well, if I run out of money, I'll go to work. No, babe, that's not happening. You know, it's very, very difficult to get citizenship in Panama. So all we working with is permanent residency, and that is not going to qualify you to take Panamanian jobs, period. Okay. So, and then um, Giovanna, when you come in as a pensionado, um, isn't there a restriction on the on you working at all? Or yes. how does that work? Yes, pensionados can buy property, can do business like in as an independent professional or their own business, work in their own uh, company, but they cannot work for a third party like a Panamanian company or you know that is not allowed because there is no job permit for that type uh, unless um, the pensionado will open a company and work for its own to get a job permit. And when they open a company, so the pensionado can open the company and work for themselves and, and then, but do they have to hire a Panamanian to work with them? Not now. Okay. Not now. With the Friendly Nations visa, they changed that in April, starting May, that for the self-employed, by being self-employed by the Panamanian company, there is that's the need of a Panamanian, one Panamanian. Okay. That is one way to get a job permit, to get a job permit, or get an independent type of business license without having a Panamanian, mm -hmm. but not for the pensionados. Okay. Somebody is saying, um, how hard is it to bring a pet to Panama? Um, Giovanna, you may, Giovanna or uh, Maria, you, have you dealt closely with individuals bringing pets and what, what has their experience been? Yes, there is a document that is called a certificate, a health certificate that has to be legalized with the apostille and is issued by the Department of Agriculture and Health in the U.S. USDA, I think it's the it's its name, mm -hmm. and yes, they they have to get that to in order to bring the pet and also re fill up some forms to our Ministry of Health and Agriculture in Panama in order to get that that done. But there are people that do that. I think Genesis, Genesis, do you do that? Oh, Genesis, do you move pets? <laughs> So far, we have not, but we do have a custom clearing agent that is able to do the full paperwork for mm -hmm. the country. Yes, oh, okay. we also have someone. Mm -hmm. That's helpful because that's the complaints that I've heard, like, you know, the paperwork for it. But a lot of people have pets here. So one thing you can do is definitely join Black Expats in Panama Facebook group. And you can ask that question or use the search tool in the top right-hand corner. And there'll be a lot of information that comes up about, you know, moving moving your pets. A lot of pets are here. Yes, Mr. Lloyd? Um, I wanted to ask how easy is it to get a pet when you are already in Panama? It's very easy. Okay. Very easy. That's All you got to do is get Lloyd to go for it. <laughs> That's my problem. I just can't get Alfredo to go for it. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> That's what we're doing. We're waiting until we get there. My kids want a dog. And I read, like, you have to, as you mentioned, the U.S. agriculture and health. And it has to be, like, within 10 days of the day you fly. And then you got to worry about what month you're flying because of the heat for certain airlines. And so I told my kids we can get a dog, but we just got to wait till we get there. And then because I 
as much as all the other stuff we're going to be doing between residency, moving, car, house, school, that yes. I was like, we can get the dog when we get there because that's just one less thing off my to-do list. <laughs> yes. And then, I'm sorry. And then the thing is too, when you have a pet with you, you know, if you have to stay somewhere temporarily, it has to meet all these other requirements that you have. And then they have to accept the pet. And then you might have to pay pet insurance. You know, you know what I mean? Or the uh, pet deposits and, and everything. Um, somebody said, what are your thoughts on co-living? And um, do you mean like, you know, people getting together and sharing a space or say if somebody's going to be in Panama certain months and not, is that what that means? It's for nomads, like uh, basically people who work remotely, they congregate in specific uh, buildings and apartment complexes, like a few companies called Salinas and things like that. I don't know if they have it in Panama, um, but I wanted to hear y'all's recommendation in using that over like an Airbnb for temporary travel. Well, they actually, uh, Maria, that's that's like the new building here in Brisa's, right? It's yeah. actually called co-living. It's, the name is co-living, so maybe, yes, it's for that, but I don't know. I know mostly, I mean, um, Venezuelan, Colombian people, they usually do that or, you know, most of the time, but I don't know about Americans, so I don't, I, I don't have anything to say about it because I don't know. Well, I think that I think that all options are open because there are also people that are looking for co-work space, you know, people that need to go into the office. And yeah, uh, it's a similar concept, Charlotte. It's like uh -huh. the same thing, but it has a, it has a co-working space with a living component for people who are digital nomads. Yes, I think the one, the one yeah, in uh, uh -huh. this the space. One... Go ahead, Maria. Go ahead. The space that I'm talking about here, Brisa, the golf is co-living. And it is um, it, it is more <clears throat> geared towards young people. And they told Alfredo to his face, you know, I mean, all the marketing doesn't say they don't want no old people up in there, but you have young, you know, people on the on the, the images. And the lady said. They're attracting young people for this cold living, um, cold living space. And apparently there is like, you know, you can rent a unit for about 900 a month. And then you can actually, um, you can actually take in and use some of that money towards a purchase. So it seems that they're trying to bring in like college students and the younger, the younger generation. Uh, Breach of the Golf is very, 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 um, very ex expanding quite a bit at this time. So if you have children, you know, a lot of great schools here. Um, they're putting universities here. It's like you can walk to everything. The train comes right here. So there's a lot of that. Now we're going to have to get ready to go, guys. So I'm going to try to see if anybody did not get a question answered that they want to go ahead and just say it. I see there were some answers in the chat. Hey, Charlotte, I have a question. Sure. This is Michelle from 14. Listen. Hi. So listen, um, what do you do if you want to come back and do a follow-up visit? Because I know my goal is to move back to Panama, but I still had a lot of answers like it nailing down where I want to live, you know, how do you get, I mean, I'm years out, but I want to start like putting money away and just kind of nailing down maybe a second visit. How do we go about doing that? Um, well, you can always, you can always come back. Our professionals are always available. Uh, once you come here, Maria gives tours, like you can work with her and to decide, you know, what it is that you want. But honestly, if your goal is a few years out, you know, I mean, I don't, you know, it's it's premature for you to oh, look okay. at a lot of stuff is going to be so different. But what I hear you saying that's super important is the planning part. If mm -hmm. you want to make that move, come back and visit. And as a matter of fact, 
in May of 2024, we are having a reunion. By May of 2024, we will have done almost 30 tours. And at that time, we're inviting everybody back, every Beat family back. And it's not going to be a relocation tour. We're staying in different hotels. We're doing different things. It's a different vibe. You'll get to come and you'll see Panama more on a vacation touristy thing, you know, okay. touristy type vibe, because as y'all know, we kept y'all going the whole time. So you didn't really get to do a lot of that touristy thing. You can add some extra days. There's actually some down days. We'll be at a resort part of it where you can get with, um, you can go see places. You can explore more things that you didn't get a chance to explore. You know, you can connect with the professionals. All of our professionals for the most part have complimentary um, consultations. So you can do that, you know, if you wanted to do, if you needed the, um, the health tour, you can, you know, get that through, um, through, uh, um, expat health services. And so you could do some different things, but it gives you a chance to come back and see Panama in yet another, diff another way. Now I'm telling y'all right now to your face, we go into Cologne. Okay. And I'm sorry, that's just always <laughs> going to be part of the trip okay we got to go there i'm yeah. probably on my 25th trip to that cultural caribbean day i ain't tired of it yet so imagine mm -hmm. if we come back and we have this you know big crowd and you know just hoping it's not too big that some of our vendors can't handle it but we'll work with that then but we will be going to cologne um, wonderful yes so we can we can but we'll have we'll be able to relax more and so that I definitely suggest that you come back, stay in touch with us. Don't ever hesitate to reach out. Everybody that you met on the tour is available for you. You know, even if you don't still have their information, go back to the chat group, you know, or reach out to me or um, Chris. Chris, are you on the call? Did he go? Okay, I guess Chris had to. There you go. Hi, Chris. Yes, I, I am on, on and hey, I just Chris. have been having trouble getting <laughs> off of mute. So I've been trying to throw some notes on the side if anyone has been seeing them. But we're so appreciative that you're all here and we have a lot in store for you when you come back. And uh, thank everyone for, for joining us tonight. Yes. Do anybody have any questions for Chris? And also, before you all go, make sure you go to this chat. And if you go to the chat and touch on the three dots at the bottom, and it'll hit, it'll come up more. There's a place at the top that says save chat. You definitely want to save the chat to get the um, professional's information, see the answers to the questions. And then, of course, like you can always ask it me. Does anybody have any questions for Chris? What is going on? I think my light's dying. Anybody have any more questions? Oh, I'm dying. Crap. Y'all, I think my, I think I just went out. Can Thank you, you Charlotte. Thank I'm you. Gone. Is it me? We can hear you, Charlotte. We can hear, we can you. hear you, Charlotte. Oh, oh, okay. Well, good. I'm glad I didn't start cussing. <laughs> something's, going on. <laughs> something's going on over here. My lights are going out and something's happening. So, um, but I, I just, I just, what well, did y'all find this helpful? Yes. Excellent. I'm going yes, to very helpful. Yes. Yeah. Good. Yes. We're going to it do was good. It was good to have people that are thinking, making that move to be on a journey that you're going on because it can be frightening because it's so yes. new and different. Mm -hmm. But you know you're not by yourself because I see all the good people here. So that's that was a good thing. Yes. yes. And 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 also just a reminder that we are here and I mean that. You know, a lot of y'all, and you know it, a lot of y'all, we've been in touch ever since you left. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Well, my people. So if there's anything that you need and I'm constantly learning stuff and um, and growing, we're constantly expanding our services and resources to you. So don't hesitate to reach out, you know, mark on your calendar to come back in May 
Uh, and plus, show I'm turning 60. So, you know, we finna turn up. Understand? <laughs> In May, I'm turning 60. The tours are turning three years old. And we're having a beat with you, young. Okay? So, it is going to be bananas. It's going to be six days. So, it's going to be an extra day. You're going to have time to relax at the resort. And we just going to have a great time, you know, so it's going to be a different vibe and it'll be like a family reunion. Mm -hmm. So if what we're going to be going to be doing this, um, how do you say the chat again? Okay. So go to the chat. My chat is gone now. Somebody walk her through this because I can't see my chat. Oh, hold on a second. Okay. Okay. So go, okay. When you go to the chat, Next to the smiley face and the pencil and the T. Click those three dots and it'll say more. And then you'll see save chat at the top. And if you save chat, it'll save. Okay. Don't think you could do it. If anybody needs that chat, just, just let me know. And we, we're gonna we're gonna share this, this video. So if you miss anything, we'll we'll put it in the group. That's question. That's question, yeah. Charlotte. Have you thought about extending your your tour to include Bochetti and David? Yeah, I have. I have. Yeah. And, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if some of you know. I actually went to Bochetti. I saw and, the video. It was great. Yeah, I did. I went to Bochetti. I I did a whole video on the feedback and and everything. You know, because Bochetti, a lot of us are not interested because you know we hear it's MAGA. You know, it's, you know, not enough of us there. And a lot of that is true. Um, but it has definitely progressed. And um, I did an interview with a local radio station there. It's all on our YouTube um, channel. But I was pretty impressed, y'all. Let me tell you something. There's quite a growing Black expat community there. And they, they call themselves Blingos, Black mm -hmm. Gringos. And some of them in that group, you know, were there five years ago and they was like the first blacks. Okay. And so I'm actually wanting to do some events with them and bring them here and have share some culture and let us go there and spend some time with them. So I have thought about it. Logistically, it looks a little different because it's kind of a special place. The roads are very small. You know, it would just be like, you know, have to be kind of a smaller tour. And but we can also recommend, um, you know, different options for those that really want to see it. If you really want to see it, just tell us and we'll help you help you arrange that while you're here. You know. Not a problem. You Do you know, have the dates for May? Do you have the dates for May already? Or are you still working yes, on those? Yes, honey, yes. I think it's um May 15th through the 20th. 15th, May 15th through the 20th. And we're just about to release it. So stay tuned. So when you look at the 2024 um beat cultural relocation tour schedule may is not there because it's a whole different situation okay it's a vacation it's a vacation and it's a family okay. reunion so we'll have that out soon we'll be working on it anybody else it's like old times like before your trip right <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and sharon sharon yes Say hi. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Hello. Oh, and I, I know what Sharon you were talking to. Oh, oh it's two of us. Yes. Okay. This one, she's this talking to me because we, we are actually here in Panama. Actually, and... there's three Sharons, but okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm, Sharon, I'm Sharon Williams. Yeah. And so Sharon my husband Davis. and I, we were beat five. And so we came back the following November and started and did all our paperwork. And then now we've been here all summer. And so our plan is to be here permanently next year. Nice. All summer. And I, I miss them already. They've gone to, I mean, they have so many friends here. They are just explorers. Every day they're doing something. They've come to the <laughs> satisfied. They come to the 
business to business. They come to cafe and conversation. I mean, they are just having such a wonderful time. And uh, it's going to be hard to we're leave. Gonna it really we're going to have our last supper together uh, on um, Saturday, July um, 29th. I know. And that's the other thing about being, you know, a former beat cultural uh, relocation to a person is that, you know, I don't hang out with everybody. I just don't have time. But y'all are my family. And I feel like you invested in me whenever you're doing something. If it's anything that I can help to support what you're doing, you know, um, if you're here, I'm, I'm going to try my best to make sure that I can get with you and come and see your new digs. Even if they didn't give you the keys, uh, even if you had to go borrow the keys, Cleo, because I love you. Honestly, I say that and I, I just mean it. I really do. And y'all mean the world to me. And so I can't wait to see y'all again. I'm saying Charlotte, huh? Charlotte, since, since we're promoting vacations, be nice to see some of these faces in Cuba in February. Ooh, what you say, girl? We going to I already got Cuba my plane tickets. You know, I'm doing it piece by piece. I got my plane tickets, so now I'm working on my deposit. All right, baby. <laughs> you know, those plane, plane tickets need to come first. We got a big, we got a trip coming up to Cuba in February, February 8th to the 13th. We're going to Egypt, October 14th through the 24th. Uh, we are just rolling. We is it's our where do we find that time. information? Um, <laughs> everywhere. I'll put it in the chat. <laughs> where you I'm at? ready to go to Cuba. Ready to go to Cuba? Send me an email. Send me a message, Michelle. And I'll send it's you. It's gonna be on. I'm telling you, it's gonna be on. I'm gonna make sure it's gonna be on. <laughs> it, it, it promised to be on. It's like going and getting other black culture. It's like. It's just, you can feel it. And I'm so excited because I've never been to Cuba and I've never been to Egypt. So we really rolling out some bucket list tours this year, y'all. And so um, this year and next year. So if you want to come, you know, you know, I um, we we will always have it so that it's, it's nice. You know, we'll take good care of you. We'll take good care of where, you. Where do you want me to send you a message so I can get this info? <laughs> Okay, send it to send it to my send it to my email address, Michelle, the uh, Black Expats and Panama Gmail. All right, you have okay, it whatever tonight. whatever come up when you go to your Gmail, your message, send it to me. I'll get it and I'll, I'll send it right back to you. Um, and the, I'm, and not, the beauty, I'm not the beauty of, of to put it in the chat. Hold on, y'all. Let me let me try to put it in the chat. I was just gonna say while you're doing that, the beauty of the Cuba trip. And correct me if I'm wrong, Charlotte, but I've read it several times. It's just like all your your breakfast, lunch, and dinner is included. So and your 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 housing is included. So yes. you know, well, that, you get there, all you need really is your money to spend on your souvenirs or whatever, because your tours are included. Chris, I mean it's almost like there? going on a cruise. <laughs> Chris, are you still there? I don't see him. He's gone. So okay. it's really it's a it's a good deal, uh, mm -hmm. and it's not easy to get in and out of Cuba, and they're handling all of that, you yes. know. So all you got to do is have your visa, make your payment, get on the plane, and show up. Exactly, it's the easiest way. It's the only way I would go, you know, because it's just too much. It's too much stuff that I could mess up. <laughs> so I'll leave it to the travel professionals. Black expats rule. So that's through ITA. Yes, I I I always work with them. Okay. Um. So yes, they we're doing it together. We're doing this through our and I can't I can't find it fast enough, y'all. I'm I'm a little challenged when it comes to my Zoom and going back and forth. So I'll I'll send it whoever wants it or just just let me know. Um. Or Talisa, if you got it, you can put it in there. You got the link, Mama. Because I'm I'm challenged, but so that's that's all I have. If if you guys don't have anything else, we can go ahead and um and close out. But like I said, if there's any questions you didn't answer, our professionals are available, and so am I. Cool. Good night. Thank y'all for night. coming. In. Don't forget to say thank you. I, I dropped the link for you. So Lisa, Everyone. put it in there. Who says? Yeah, I put the link in there. It's in there. Awesome. So Lisa, put it in there, y'all. Make sure you save the chat.
So how you say that? Okay, go to the <laughs> chat. Go to the chat box and show. Okay, let me see. Okay, when you go to the chat and it opens up the white box, you'll see all that go all the way down to the bottom. And you'll see a smiley face and three dots on your left. At the all the way at the bottom. Click hover over the three dots and then hit more. And then oh. save chat. Okay, I just have one question. Okay. Where is it being saved to so I can get it? It'll go to um I, I think it goes to if you automatically have a Zoom folder or it'll go to your documents. Let me see. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I think I think it goes right to your Zoom folder. Either your Zoom folder or your documents. Documents. It does. And yeah. it goes to the documents. Okay. It goes to documents. If if you don't have it, Sharon, just let me know. I'll send it to you, Mama Sita. Okay. No okay. Oh Thanks everybody for hanging in there with us. Adios. All right. Talk to you so soon. Bye. 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 <laughs>